Hello, homeowners and roof installers. Wanted to get with you today to show you an introductory video on installing ridge cap. In this video, what you will see is a lot of, uh, you will see a lot in this video. A lot of us are visual learners, and this will give you an opportunity to look at one of our best roofing crews installing ridge cap shingles on a finished install of a roof. So in this video, some of the highlights that we're going to point out is uh, the beginning process before you start installing the shingles. You know, we're going to hit on uh, the importance of popping a line, finding the center of your ridge cap shingle, and knowing how to install those properly. One of the areas of installing a ridge cap shingle, also known as a hip shingle when you have a hip roof, is the how to terminate that shingle, especially where one slope intersects or it terminates into another slope. We'll show you that in this video. And again, this video is uh, we're going to focus on a lot of visual in this video. Uh, and I will share a little bit with some description of what's taking place in the video to give you further understanding. And then also feel free to send any questions you might have um, through YouTube. Just go ahead and send that question. I'll answer that question for you because, again, this is an introductory video, basic installation of the ridge cap. Uh, there are many times when you have multifaceted roof systems where you have to terminate the shingle into an unusual uh, circumstance. For instance, if you're terminating the ridge cap shingle into a wall, eh, there's some things that need to be done differently. And if you need to, uh, if you need to shoot me a question, go ahead and do that, and I'll answer that question as soon as I can. Now, this particular product today that we're installing is an Owens Corning uh, product. It is a true definition uh, duration shingle, and we're installing the accompanying ridge cap with it. Now, as we're installing the ridge cap, please take notice that we're putting an extra nail on each side, so uh, consequently uh, on each slope. And so whenever you're installing a ridge cap shingle, you're, in, you're fastening that shingle to two slopes, slope A and slope B. In each slope, we're installing two nails on that ridge cap for a total of four nails. Reason why that we're doing that is that we're in a high wind area. And because we're in a high wind area, uh, we want to make sure that these ridge caps do not blow off. A lot of contractors, what they end up doing is they'll end up face nailing, putting nails on the top of that ridge cap. That doesn't need to be done if the ridge cap is installed correctly. That's called storm nailing. We don't recommend storm nailing. Now we would do that if we're called out by a, a new client that's calling us for repair because their, their prior contractor installed the shingles in such a way where they're blowing off and if we get over there and we find a lot of the ridge cap or hip shingles that are blowing off of the roof, then we'll storm nail it. And so what the storm nail means is that you're actually installing the nail in the face of the top of the ridge cap or the hip shingle. And so we don't want to do that from the beginning. And we, we make plans on uh, that we're confident that what we install is going to stay. So what we've determined here in Colorado in the front range where we constantly get high winds in a lot of areas is that when we install the four nails per ridge cap properly the way we space them, that these ridge cap shingles will hold. As a matter of fact, manufacturers, many of them, when you install the right ridge cap with the proper shingle, many manufacturers will give a 130 mile per hour wind warranty you know, with their product. And now I know that if you have a hurricane that you know, it's unrealistic to go back to the insurance company for a 130 mile per hour wind warranty because what we have in this particular case is not gust or not, we have sustained winds of well over 130 miles or 110 miles per hour in hurricanes depending upon the category of the hurricane. So we're not 
we're not going to advocate that you go back to a manufacturer of a shingle if you have some shingles blow off in a hurricane. That's not what the warranty is for. And if you read through it, that's not really what it's saying. We're coming to the end of the gable. And at the end of the gable on our ridge, on our ridge cap run, what you'll see us doing here is we're actually had to skip about a foot. We're starting another ridge cap shingle coming in from the opposite direction. And so actually what we're gonna have to we're gonna have one set of shingles that we've been installing the whole time moving from west to east for about fifty-three feet. And then now we from the east to the west now we're installing a one foot about you know two pieces of shingles right here and they're running the opposite direction and now what we're doing at this point is we're actually terminating the very top with a cap i mean we have a ridge shingle or ridge cap but this is where the two directional shingles the way they're being installed where they terminate there you go we just terminated that and that's how you do that Install your starter strip first and then the ridge cap shingle second. All right, guys, it's necessary to pop a chalk line when installing the ridge cap shingle so you can keep those ridge cap shingles straight. Uh, boy, I love to see a, a roof with the, all the straight lines and just beautiful. And so if you try to do it without a chalk line, uh, you're going it's going to get a little crooked on you no matter how good you are. And again, as we've shared earlier or i'll go ahead and share now is that if you notice the way we're doing this we're actually lining up on slope a that ridge cap shingle tight to the chalk line and then bending that shingle over so it sits perfectly and it looks beautiful and we create a straight uh, create a straight line so if you just look at that in the video you see all the straight lines on our ridge cap on the ridge shingles and then on the hip shingles and then also if you'll notice that on our on our shingles straight lines nice straight lines on those so let's take a look here also at where we where a gable roof a gable roof terminates into another slope and then we're on both sides of that slope you have a valley intersecting so essentially you have an apex of two valleys coming together and then you have a, a ridge line that is terminating into the into the slope and this is a critical area if this is not done right then the hip your forgive me your ridge shingles will can blow off in high winds i'll explain that to you in just a moment on how we keep that from occurring and then also if it's not installed properly then it will leak at this penetration because this is a uh, this is a, a very serious point where water flows and it's diverted into two different guttering systems, if you will. We'll call the valleys a guttering system. It, the water collects there and the water is runs down the valleys to be distributed to the end of the roof to shut off either, either the roof or into a gutter, an actual metal gutter. Now in this area, as you notice, as we're installing the ridge cap shingles, that you have to split the ridge cap shingles as you bring them up into the uh, slope C. We were just dealing with slope A and B. Now slope C is the new slope that we're dealing with that where the ridge cap shingles are terminating into it. So what we have to do is lift up the existing shingles, filled shingles that are on slope C, and we have to slide in the ridge cap shingle underneath of them. But in order to get it to sit flat, we actually have to cut it. So uh, if you don't cut that shingle properly, and you can see that in our video how we're cutting those shingles, if you cut it properly, they'll lay flat. If you don't, uh, they're going to have a buckle in it where wind and rain and snow and ice can get up there and then begin to, over time, it will remove that shingle. And then you can also have a penetration of water in that area. And so we want to avoid that. Now, once you install the, the, the ridge cap shingle properly, you have to, in order to do that, you have to lift up those filled shingles 
and then you slide in underneath of the fill shingles and then once you do that you may need to come back in and reseal everything with plastic cement in order for everything to seal down properly and the final touch is that we go through the the roof at all of these points of termination is that we actually have to seal down the ridge cap shingles on both sides of where the valley's at where slope a and b come together at slope c they have to be sealed into plastic cement there you have it mm-hmm.